Welcome to On the Agenda. I'm Bong Yongshik. With the turn of the century, competition in the global market has heated up immensely, leading to a fierce battle among those behind nation branding. At a time when a good image and global reputation can add significantly to a country's competitiveness, we we'll look at what Korea is doing to reinvent itself. When you think of Korea, what comes to mind? I think of, of K-Wave art and illustration and graphics. Korea is a city that is really ahead of time, even from the United States. Sai. Kim Yeon-ha. Hanbok. Kimchi. These are countless names and words that represent the country. All that combined comes together to create a nation brand for Korea. Nation brands are a culmination of values such as the overall image, affection and perception that people have about a specific country. In other words, if individuals around the world have a good image of Korea, it can lead to greater potential added value down the line. This is why countries worldwide are making their best efforts to enhance their nation brands. For Korea, having marked its 70th anniversary of liberation from colonial rule this year, it faces the imperative task of establishing a strong nation brand. It is so far focused on collecting ideas and opinions from Koreans and foreigners on what makes Korea. Next year, the government has allocated roughly $4 million to step up efforts to build a nation brand that people around the world can embrace and relate to. We sit down with the National Committee head for Korea brand agenda, Chang Dong-yeon, who's spearheading the country's campaign to establish a compelling nation brand. Today, we have the pleasure to have Professor Chang Dong-yeon, uh, who is currently chairing the National Committee for Korea brand agenda. Welcome. Oh, pleasure to be on your program. All right. Uh, I'd like to start off by asking you the basic question. Yes. What is Korea brand? Okay, Korea brand is a holistic way of communicating the many different attributes of the country, the value of the country, and the experience of visiting Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, it used to be a one directional communication process, but what we're trying to do is create a holistic communication agenda where it involves the participation of many different stakeholders, including the public, but also participation of many different corporations and also partnerships with you know, different individuals, uh, different experts uh, across uh, uh, sort of uh, communication uh, mm -hmm. uh, process of you know, involving many different people. So it is uh, far more than just uh, uh, enhancing public and international recognition of Korean government. Yes, it involves that, but it's actually to uh, create a long-term image of the country as a destination uh, you know, country, but also you know, relate every different products mm -hmm. of the country and people of the country to many different values. Right. You're leading this uh, national committee, but this is not the first time that the Korean government uh, tried to enhance the recognition of a Korea brand. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a similar effort in 2009. Yes. So what is the main difference between the government's effort uh, in 2009 and current uh, effort in 2015? Yes, in 2009, there was a national uh, brand committee but it uh, was never initiated into a fully uh, communicated program. Uh, it, it contemplated creating a government identity, but that was never initiated. Okay. But what we're trying to do right now is actually to create a, a three-year program uh, that will be finalized with the uh, opening of the PyeongChang Olympics in 2018. Mm -hmm. But what we started this year is to create an awareness of the program, you know, create many different participation uh, platforms, mm -hmm. And next year, we want to fully initialize it to create other different programs related to many different also programs of the Ministry of Culture. Okay. Uh, could you give us more specific examples of the current activities by your committee? Yes. Uh, we've actually had five different uh, uh, activities this year. For example, we've had two contests uh, where creating a public forum uh, where in the second uh, contest, we uh, had an open call for many different uh, public uh, creation of art, mm -hmm. design, photographs, film, and also music. 
And we also want sort of the Koreans to feel good about Korea. Mm -hmm. So we created uh, sort of the What Makes Korea uh, contest, mm -hmm. open not only to the Korean public, but also to international you know, mm -hmm. public as well. Okay. So what makes Korea, according to the participants? Uh, well, uh, it's kind of uh, different forms of expressions. Mm -hmm. uh, so we also had an uh, open call for, you know, sort of submitting keywords. Keywords. So we collected mm -hmm. over 1.2 million keywords. Mm -hmm. Wow. So of the keywords, we wanted what the people thought about what is traditional Korea, mm -hmm. what is the current Korea, but what is also the value of future Korea. Mm -hmm. And right. some of the interesting sort of uh, result was that for the, what a lot of people thought about the current Korea was passion. Passion, yeah. right. Uh, according to the uh, uh, brand strategy consultancy, Brand Finance, based in London, Korea is doing quite well. It is ranked 12th last year in terms of the most valuable nation brands, scoring 10% higher than the previous year. So Korea is uh, just uh, behind countries like the US, China, Germany, and the United States uh, that are leading the pack. Uh, so tell me more about where Korea stands on the global scale. Uh, there are many different uh, ways of measuring the, the country Standard, index. Right, right. But uh, in many different uh, results, Korea is ranked within the top 20, as okay. you just mentioned. Right. And I think a lot of that is related to sort of the, the way people think about Korean mm -hmm. products. Right. But also uh, many different uh, personalities like Psy or mm -hmm. sports figures like Yuna Kim mm -hmm or uh, Kang jong ho of the Pittsburgh right. uh, Pirates. Pirates right. So their achievements results in you know, you know, raising the awareness of Korea. Uh, if you saw some of the uh, pro, uh, telecast of Kang jong ho mm -hmm. when he hits a home run, mm -hmm. a lot of people start raising the Taegok oh, know, okay. flag. Right. Yeah. So, I think I saw that scene yeah. on TV. So what are some of the main factors determining the value of a, a nation brand, generally speaking? <sighs> Well, uh, there's many different factors, but of course, you know, one is sort of the increased awareness in media. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, for example, when K-pop uh, becomes very popular overseas, uh, it naturally raises the uh, sort of association of the country, but also how people perceive the quality of the products uh, being made by the country. Mm -hmm. So made in Korea, you know, w whether it be electronics or uh, automobiles, mm -hmm. Or you know, related to as I said, sports figures, mm -hmm. it raises a, sort of the consensus of mm -hmm. what Korea is. Well, listening to your explanation of what uh, Korea has achieved to, in terms of enhancing its uh, national brand, I'm slightly concerned because the focus uh, may be too much on what's going on in recent period, right. as opposed to the beauty of the tra traditional culture right. uh, Korea can offer to the world. Right. How do you keep the balance? Well, I think, uh, as you mentioned, uh, balance is the key word. Uh, integration of the traditional cultural value, but also uh, what is the uh, current value of Korea, but what is the vision of Korea? Vision of Korea. So when you're creating uh, sort of the nation brand image, you have to take all of that context uh, into a coordinated, cohesive program. Mm -hmm. um, other countries seem to have uh, perhaps uh, uh, understood the importance of uh, national branding uh, earlier on. So I can recall some good examples such as New York City's campaign, right. I Love New York, right. or uh, Britain is Great, right. uh, No Canada. Right. Uh, what kind of uh, successful recipe behind the, these examples? No Canada and Great Britain uh, involve many different partnerships. Mm -hmm. uh, partnerships with the public, but an important factor was partnerships with corporations. Mm -hmm. So many corporations actually became sort of the spokesmen, spokesmen the ambassadors right. of the campaign. Right. For example, with the Great uh, Britain uh, campaign, a lot of corporations like Mini mm -hmm. or Burberry mm -hmm. uh, actually uh, made it part of their agenda. Okay. So in many of their media uh, sort of uh, application or in their advertising, uh, they emphasize uh, the Great Britain campaign mm -hmm. because you know, great uh, becoming not only a, a sort of uh, adjective for the country, but also an adjective for their products, okay. but also uh, their kind of very uh, patriotic sort of way of uh, kind of communicating value. As you mentioned earlier, it's a, a truly holistic approach. Right? Yes, it is. Okay. And now with SNS, uh, you know, it has to be a very uh, natural, a very kind of uh, what they say, uh, empathetic, empathetic. You know, way of you know, right. communicating. Right. 
slight disadvantage South Korea may have in um, promoting its uh, image in international scenes is the existence of North Korea. Yes, it is. Because yeah. when you travel overseas, then you may be asked by foreigners that uh, whether you are from the South or North. Right. So uh, what do you think of this uh, so-called North Korea discount or North right. Korea liability right. for South Korea to enhance its international image and uh, brand recognition? To be honest, it is a liability, the situation with North Korea, but uh, uh, compared to 30 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, sort of because of uh, the way communication is kind of now kind of uh, more available, a lot of uh, people uh, overseas uh, know the difference between uh, North and South Korea. Okay. And, and therefore, they, uh, they know the situation in North Korea. Mm. Uh, so uh, there, of course, is a negative factor when uh, we have some tensions in the peninsula. Mm. Uh, but a, a lot of people overseas are now uh, more intellectual to know sort of that uh, it would be very short term. Mm. So I think it's important that you know, more information is available mm -hmm. using many different uh, news uh, outlets. Okay. Well, um, a lot of people may be familiar uh, with companies from South Korea like LG, Samsung, mm -hmm. Hyundai. Right, right. And as you mentioned, they uh, recognize easily with uh, sports figures, right. Yuna Kim or right. Kang Jung Ho. Yeah. But if I uh, may push you a little further, right. then you mentioned Korea passion. Right. So you have very good materials in your hands, right. but uh, what kind of a simple but captivating slogan or uh, image South Korea represents uh, can be made? Well, actually, well, we're currently in the process of actually creating a set of uh, a value system uh, for the uh, nation brand campaign. Mm -hmm. So that will be coordinated in the beginning of 2016. So uh, when people think of uh, you know, the Korea brand, mm -hmm. we want a certain set of value and a, a kind of a, a campaign kind of uh, name mm -hmm. to sort of uh, epitomize mm -hmm. the whole process. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are contemplating the most effective way of doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Korea used to have a slogan like buy Korea in economic uh, sectors or dynamic Korea right. to uh, symbolize a passion. Right. But uh, unfortunately, they did not last long. Right. Uh, so what do you think uh, they did not really last long, as long as uh, we originally hoped? Right. Uh, I mentioned the uh, two campaigns like Great Britain and No Canada. Mm -hmm. And I think well, what we have to do uh, you know, from previous uh, brand uh, initiative is to create a more long-term way of mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, making it embedded right. into the culture. Right. And uh, because uh, in the past, for example, uh, with Dynamic Korea, mm -hmm. It was a very a short term and a one directional that was only used for, for example, sports events. Right. But now what we have to do is uh, sort of embed that into many different cultural activities. Mm -hmm. So it becomes part of the lifestyle, part of our psyche and, and part of our value system. And the only way to succeed, as we saw in No Canada or Great Britain, is that we need yeah. active voluntary participation of the public and the corporations. So how do you initiate the voluntary participation of the public? Uh, creating a, a very uh, a transparent, mm -hmm. uh, a very uh, open value system. Mm -hmm. So the, the key is everyone to recognize the value mm -hmm. of participating. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, promoting public participation in the decision-making process, the uh, Metropolitan Government of Seoul I saw you, right? right? Uh, but it was embroiled in a rather harsh controversy right. after it announced the decision. Right. So I think there is a kind of backside of right. promoting public participation. Right. Uh, when I uh, mention uh, public participation, mm -hmm. uh, it could be in many different phases of the project, uh, but the most important is in the implementation of the implementation. project. And also, uh, you know, the way of uh, involving the public in the selection of uh, the communication is also important, but there's also a, a very important factor of you have to kind of integrate the expert or, you know, how uh, internationals feel about, you know, certain uh, communication methods. So everything has to be coordinated in the most effective way, and you need certain metrics to see sort of the positive, but also the negative way of, you know, many different uh, kind of outcomes. Right. Right. I think one of the big obstacles to achieving the goal is that uh, most of the uh, consumers of the Korea branding campaigns will be familiar with English. Right. So you have to make a product in English. Right. Um, what, what was your experience in 
you know, creating the Korea brand in English. Were there any big difficulties? Well, we're uh, you know, currently uh, you know, investigating or contemplating many different uh, words mm -hmm. uh, that could personify you know, the, the best Korean brand image. Mm -hmm. So English uh, will be an important fact, but that English word also has to uh, resonate mm -hmm. or has to create, again, empathy, both with Koreans and non-Koreans. Could you just give us some examples of English expressions or vocabulary that are very useful in resonating Koreanness? Well, I think passion is very important. Mm -hmm. And another word is unity, because unity, unity. is also uh, a kind of a, a term that is the aspiration of Korea, uh, our, our situation also with North. But unity is also kind of an emotional uh, expression of you know, how we could create bonding, mm -hmm. how we can create a common uh, consensus. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to uh, coordinate, uh, integrate all those different kind of meaning as also kind of the, uh, the functional way of uh, using you know, certain uh, verbs or mm -hmm. terms right. to create the most effective um, method of communication. Yeah. Well, at the same time, you don't want to uh, compromise aesthetics right, right. in promoting the campaign. How do you keep the balance between the, uh, the promotion of the brand, national brand recognition and maintaining high standard of aesthetics? Well, that's a very Im important question because uh, what we're trying to achieve with this agenda is to sort of enhance the, the Korean sensibility, but also the sophistication right, of the right. Korean culture. So a, a term that we're commonly using with this project is Korea premium. Korea so premium. how to enhance the yeah. premium value of Korea. Okay. Because for Korea to go to the next level, uh, we have to achieve many different sectors of the society, right. the Korea premiumness. Yeah. So uh, a, a word, but also the aesthetic, the visual sort of expression of this project will all have to be coordinated. It will be, be a true, true combination of art, science, Exactly. Imaging. So aesthetic will be a very important factor. Okay. Um, in the future, I hear the Korean government will integrating all the different ministry logos right. and create this as one comprehensive, common, representative icon, right. like the uh, bold uh, eagle right. for the US government. Right. Uh, why is this considered important? Uh, we've done uh, many different case studies of uh, OECD countries and we found out that uh, in recent years that uh, more than 20 of those countries have initiated a government identity uh, agenda. And the factor behind these uh, sort of uh, projects are one is to sort of uh, create cost-effective communication system mm -hmm. and secondly is to uh, sort of communicate in a, a much uh, more effective way. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in many polls, uh, many countries realized that uh, the citizens really couldn't uh, differentiate the identities of the ministries. Right, right. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, in order to uh, resolve that, they decided to also, you know, you know what is the most uh, representative mm -hmm. you know, symbol of the government. And rather than having different logos, mm -hmm unify the identity and also you know, use you know, different signatures mm -hmm. uh, to sort of, you know, again, mm -hmm. differentiate the ministries, but also unify that this is a government institution. Mm -hmm. So th that is the process that we are currently uh, researching. Okay. Uh, Professor Chang, I, I understand that th that should be pretty much still in progress. Yes. Uh, but uh, could you just uh, uh, share with us uh, what are the candidates? for the common logo for the, all the government branches? Uh, well, uh, many countries, uh, the, the logos or the emblem uh, comes, uh, or the symbol comes from the flag. Okay. So right. naturally, uh, our flag, the Taegeuk, uh -huh. would be a very strong re representative uh, symbol okay. of the government. And our current uh, government identity uses the Mugunga flower in combination with the Taegeuk. So the, the Taegeuk is found both in the flag and also with the current government right. identity. What are the most conspicuous and popular images or uh, recognition of Korea as a nation so far? Uh, well, uh, overseas, uh, of course, uh, K-pop and okay. the Korea dramas uh, has been a very important factor in sort of enhancing the image of the Korea. For example, we found out in the Orient, for example, uh, Korean cosmetic products are really popular. And it's related to how the Korean uh, 
actors or actresses are perceived okay. in the many different drama. Yeah. So I, I see that as also a very important uh, sort of extension of you know sort of the Korea image. Yeah. But uh, in the future, well, you know, as I said, the Korea brand agenda will also involve you know, creating sort of you know, what is Koreanness or mm -hmm. what makes Korea. Right. So we're going to sort of extend that into many different programs. And I should mention that uh, we launched uh, KoreaArtStories.com. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. uh, so that will be important uh, for, again, uh, showing uh, many different stories mm -hmm. of Koreans or how m many different opinion leaders, mm -hmm. uh, for example, you know, feel about Korea. Mm -hmm. and, and Again, uh, you, because what we're trying to communicate is an archiving process for you know, what is uh, Korea. Um, have you uh, ever found any perceptional gap between Koreans and uh, foreigners overseas about uh, Koreanness? Uh, for instance, uh, what Koreans themselves think of true Korean uh, essence uh, may not be the same Koreanness perceived right. by foreigners. Right. Are there any examples showing? the different perceptions between Koreans and foreigners about Koreanness? Right. Well, I, I, I suppose that the biggest gap is a lot of internationals are not aware of the Korean history. Korean history. So uh, they're not aware that we have a 5,000 year history, mm -hmm. uh, a diverse country. Uh, and, and therefore, a lot of perception of Korea are limited to Korean products or Korean uh, you know, K-pop or mm -hmm. Korean drama. But when a lot of visitors come to Korea, uh, when they uh, taste uh, the, the food mm -hmm. uh, or they visit the museums, mm -hmm. uh, they're very kind of uh, amazed or impressed mm -hmm. by our kind of sort of our, our full uh, sort of you know, extension of our different culture. So I, I suppose culture uh, diversity is the biggest gap. It's interesting that uh, you have not mentioned food, right. Korean food or Korean fa traditional fashion like right. hanbok. Do they have any good potential to be an integral part of this campaign? Uh, it's a very important uh, factor uh, because uh, you know, Korean, uh, as you mentioned, food uh, or restaurants are now becoming very popular in uh, cosmopolitan cities like London and New York mm -hmm. and Paris. So when the Korean uh, image is enhanced, mm -hmm. it naturally uh, sort of relates to the Korean experience uh, with different uh, culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, restaurants, uh, Korean cuisine will be a natural extension of the Korea brand image. But Korean fashion uh, will also be an important aspect because the Korean colors in, uh, for example, in hanbok, mm -hmm. but also in our traditional decoration like uh, jogakbo, right, right. Uh, are kind of uh, very kind of uh, aesthetically mm -hmm. pleasing. They're very impressed with the kind of really vitalizing color. So that could be another extension of our future Korean content. In order to make the traditional uh, Korean culture more appealing and uh, receptive to foreigners, uh, some forms of uh, uh, adaptation or fusion uh, may be necessary. Uh, how much uh, is a fusion would you, as an expert of design, right. uh, allow? Well, I, I think uh, fusion uh, is very important because, uh, again, in the long term, uh, we have to find our Koreanness in our culture and some of the culture that it dates back several hundred years. For example, Hangul mm -hmm. is uh, sort of one of the uh, very strongest epitome that symbolizes Korea. So mm -hmm. recently, Hangul has been used not only as a functional way of sort of using communication, you know, communicating, yeah. but it's also used aesthetically mm -hmm. uh, in many different fashion and also uh, in, in ways of you know, actually uh, showing you know, you know, sort of the, the original, mm -hmm. sort of the, the public intended uh, intent of uh, hunger. Right. Well, Professor Zhang, uh, you must have achieved so much for the past uh, three years leading the committee. But I'm sure that next year, 2016, will be even busier for you. Right. What are your uh, goals and plans for next year? Uh, my goals for next year uh, is because, you know, the, this past year uh, was actually creating the foundation for the program. Our hope is that next year it will be fully realized that the public awareness of the program uh, will be kind of uh, sort of uh, reaching our intended goals mm -hmm. uh, to have more voluntary participation. Mm -hmm. And we really hope that many corporations become involved mm -hmm. uh, to see the value of, you know, the Koreanness, because you know, you know, made in Korea 
uh, in the long run will become a, such an important factor. But made in Korea has to go from industrial base mm. to cultural base. Mm. So in the long run, with all OECD countries, you have to become a soft power, mm -hmm. soft right. cultural power. Right which is extremely important in the conduct of foreign policy. Definitely. Right. All right. I'm sure that the corporations and Korean citizens uh, who have been watching this program will uh, gear up their enthusiasm to support your leadership next year. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and time today. Well, thank you for inviting me on this program. You're I welcome. enjoyed it. Our nation's brand is considered to be the face of the country. It is also a core value that has come to hold sway over the country's competitiveness and global status. This is why more efforts will be made to ensure that brand is well established and better preserved. Thanks for watching.